Yes, we'll see uh, Article 32, as I said earlier, Article 32 provides an a right to constitutional remedies, means the remedy is provided by the constitution itself. As we know, there is a, uh, in law of thought, there is an important maxim, UB just EB remedium, means where there is right, there is a remedy. Where there is right, there is remedy or there must be a remedy. Remedy means an action which can be taken in accordance with the law. Hmm? An action which can be taken in accordance with the law. A remedy means to enforce the right, to enforce the uh, right the right which is guaranteed by the statute or the right which is guaranteed by the constitution the right either guaranteed by the constitution or guaranteed by the statute means the right is recognized and protected the right is recognized always as well as protected either by statute or by constitution if it is, if the right is guaranteed by the statute, it is known as a statutory right. For example, the rights which are provided under uh, Right to Information Act, Right to Education Act, and many other rights which are conferring uh, rights on the people, many other acts which are conferring rights to the citizens as such. And if this right is not enforced, then the right would become meaningless. Huh? Without a remedy, the right is meaningless. There is no meaning to the right unless and until there is a provision to enforce the right. Now, where we can enforce the right? We can enforce the right in the court of law. We can enforce the right in the court of law. Now, as I said earlier, the right either given by the statute or given by the constitution. Here, Article 32 says the right to constitutional remedy. Constitutional remedy means when the right is recognized by the constitution, then the constitution itself shall give protection to such a right. The constitution itself shall give protection to the rights. Now, rights which are recognized under the constitution are known as fundamental rights under part three of the constitution, under part three of the constitution. And therefore, the rights which are recognized under part three of the constitution must get a right to remedy, must get uh, enforced in the court of law. And therefore, the right which has been guaranteed under uh, part three of the constitution, right from article 12, these rights, if violated by the state or by any other person, then the person whose rights have been in, uh, infringed, that active person has a right to file the case to have access to the Supreme Court under Article 30. Therefore, Article 32 is also known as a right to constitutional remedy or the writ jurisdiction of the Supreme Court which is again developed by the Supreme Court through its decision as a public interest litigation. Okay. Now we'll see what is uh, Article 32 one by one. But we must understand why the Article 32 is a, uh, inserted in the Constitution because the Constitution has made it clear that where there is right, that right must get a remedy that right must get enforced enforced in the court of law the right is nothing but an interest which is recognized and protected by law or by the administration of justice here part 3 of the constitution recognizes and protects the fundamental rights of citizens now these rights which are provided under part 3 are guaranteed means the guarantee is given by the constitution itself. Guaranteed. For what? That this right will not be infringed or the person will not be denied 
these rights by state. The state cannot deny this right to the citizen, to the person. Many rights are available to citizens. For example, Article 19 is available to citizens. As well, and uh, on the other hand, uh, rights which are available under Article 20, 21, 22 are available to person as such, irrespective of whether he is a citizen or not, but he can claim the rights uh, under the Constitution of India. Okay? Therefore, this right has been guaranteed. This is the constitutional guarantee. This is constitutional guarantee. The Constitution assures to all the citizens, to all the peoples who are residing in the territory of India, because this constitution is given by we, the people of India, adopted by we, the people of India, okay, to ourselves. And therefore, this constitutional guarantee of fundamental right has the right or quality of enforcement. And therefore, part three is enforceable in the court of law. The court has to take cognizance whenever there is a violation of this fundamental right. But the aggrieved person has to prove that his fundamental rights are violated. Okay, then and only his writ petition, or he can have access to the Supreme Court under Article 32. Okay, now we'll see Article 32. Article 32 of the Constitution, sub clause 1, provides right to move to the Supreme Court. Okay. Whenever there is a violation of fundamental right, the person has a right to move to the Supreme Court to enforce the right which is given under Part 3 of the Constitution. Okay. Here, the Constitution gives guarantee to the citizen, to the person whose fundamental rights are infringed. He can have a direct access to the Supreme Court. He can move directly to the Supreme Court to enforce his right. To enforce his right. Means this provision, Article 32, sub clause 1, is a kind of accessory or enabling provision which enables the person as well as citizen to file a case against the state or against a state machinery or against any private individual under Article 32. Okay. Now, why this is important? Because the ordinary procedure is that whenever there is a violation of your right, you have to go to the lower court, then to the high court, then to the Supreme Court. This is the normal procedure. This is the hierarchy of judiciary in India. But here, looking into the importance of the fundamental right, the Supreme Court is embodied with a responsibility to enforce the fundamental rights of citizens. Fundamental rights of Mahato Lakshad Gyun. Kizar Udya Raja Kartan Kodun, Kendra Shasta Kodun, Raja Shasta Kodun, Kiva Tenchaika the machinery kodun, authority kodun, prashasna kodun, zar vektinche mulbut adhikaran su langan sala sail. तरते व्यक्तिला निकालाची कि वा न्यायाची वाट न बगता कि वा तल न्यायाची वाट बगु लागू नहीं भागावे लागू नहीं है मनुन तो व्यक्ति थेट सुप्रीम कोर्ट में दे मंजे भारत चा सर्वोच्च न्यायालय में दे याचिका दाखल करो शब्दों तैसा टी हाँ आर्टिकल 32 हाथी से बहुत आसान एस बी हैव सीन इन � wherein the rights of a Bangladeshi woman means a foreign citizen has been violated, has been infringed. The injuria, damnum sign injuria and injuria sign damnum. Injuria, that is a infringement of right has been caused of a Bangladeshi woman of foreign citizen. But still the Supreme Court has accepted the petition saying that Article 21 is guaranteed to all the persons and not only to the citizens. Yes, citizen can file a petition under Article 32 if there is a violation of fundamental right. But not only citizen, but the person who is not a citizen of India can also have access to the Supreme Court. Okay? Article 32. Now, this is enabling provision. This enables the Supreme Court to entertain the petitions of the person directly if there is a violation of fundamental right. Okay? Now, Article 32 sub plus 2 says that the Supreme Court shall have power 
to issue directions orders or writs which are appropriate in the particular case and the writs is in the nature of habeas corpus mandamus certiorari co warranto and prohibition okay habeas corpus mandamus certiorari co warranto and prohibition these are the kinds of writs means writs are nothing but the prerogative or discretionary orders discretionary or a prerogative now as we know that the indian legal system is a development or is derived from the common law legal system or from the british legal system in britain there was a king or queen or the royal authority was there to whom certain prerogatives discretionary power is guaranteed is provided in the same nature here in india though we have not adopted the principle of crown or a king can do no wrong but still we have a precedent we have supreme court at the highest level to take certain prerogatives to take certain discretionary powers of judicial in nature and therefore the supreme court has certain prerogative remedies or the prerogative writs which can be in the nature of habeas corpus mandamus certiorari quo warrant or prohibition these are not only writs but directions and orders can be issued by the supreme court to the concerned authority who have violated who have infringed the fundamental rights of citizens okay we'll see the writs one by one but before that we'll see article 32 clause by clause okay then article 32 sub clause 3 provides that without prejudice to sub clause 1 and 2 of article 32 without prejudice to article 32 sub clause 1 and 2 the parliament may by law confer a writ jurisdiction to any other court having a local jurisdiction means the parliament by may by law can confer can enable any other court like a super a high court or a district court that they can issue the writs but for that the law has to be enacted the law has been passed has to be passed by the parliament and without prejudice here the enabling clause is there but here the parliament is enabled here the parliament is enable to issue the writs the parliament may by law enable any other court any other court means a court apart from apart from supreme court any other court may be enable to issue the writs okay but for this purpose the parliament has to make a law parliament that is the lok sabha and rajya sabha has to pass a law and it shall get assent of the president okay and article 32 sub clause 4 says that the writ jurisdiction of supreme court cannot be suspended here writ jurisdiction of supreme court cannot be suspended except except means exception is provided in exceptional cases this writ jurisdiction can be suspended but article 32 sub clause 4 says that writ jurisdiction of supreme court cannot be suspended except otherwise provided by the constitution means if the provision has been made by the constitution to deprive a supreme court from having a writ jurisdiction then the supreme court is barred from having jurisdiction okay now here we can take the example of article 359 wherein it is provided that during the proclamation of emergency all fundamental rights will be suspended now here according to this provision of article 359 
which is in consonance with article 32 sub plus 4 article 359 suspends the article 32 article 359 has a power to suspend the jurisdiction of supreme court under article 32 and therefore looking into the disastrous effect of article 359 the janta government has enacted the 44th amendment to the constitution in the year 1998 and it has made an exception of article 20 and 21 now article 359 reads as all fundamental rights will be suspended except article 20 and 21 okay but for enforcing article 20 and 21 article 32 must also be open and therefore due to the 44th amendment to the constitution article 20 article 21 and article 32 are still in force are still in force they cannot be suspended even during the period emergency okay and therefore on this point dr b r ambedkar has said the right to move to the supreme court is under article 32 is the heart and soul of the constitution dr b r ambedkar who is the chairman of the drafting committee of the constitution has itself said which is one of the major important provision of the constitution it is article 32 because article 32 gives guarantee that fundamental rights which are inalienable which are inherent which are natural which are very pious and human rights of all the citizens all the persons residing in the territory of india if their fundamental rights are infringed by government or by any administrative officers then these persons whose rights have been infringed can have right to go to the supreme court for enforcing the rights which are guaranteed under part three of the constitution okay and therefore the supreme court under the ambit of article 32 has expanded the scope of article 21 that is the right to personal liberty we know that under uh, public interest litigation which is a uh, develop uh, under article 32 which says that no fundamental right can be suspended means article 32 as well as article 13 article 32 and article 13 are the constitutional guarantees article 13 which says that no law shall be in derogation with this part that is a fundamental right if any law made by the parliament which is against the fundamental right then that law to that extent will be null and void it cannot be enforced in the court of law if the law is taking away the fundamental rights asa kutla hi kaida ki jo nagrikanche mulbhut adhikar je fundamental right part 3 madhe dile ahet ase mulbhut adhikar jar hiraun get asel kadun get asel ta asa kutla hi kaida ha radd batal karta yena sarka asel ha kay asa kaida la aplyala jivant pana deta yenar nahi asa article 13 madhe sangitle ani on the other hand there is another controlling major under article 32 which says that if any of the fundamental right is violated means if your article 13 is violated if the law made by the parliament is against the fundamental right then you can challenge the constitutional validity of that law under article 32 not only the constitutional validity of any statute any enactment but you can challenge the constitutional validity of any administrative action any constitutional amendment or any law made by the parliament you can challenge under article 32 that is there will be a judicial review of any enactment any constitutional amendment or any administrative action which is impinging upon the fundamental rights ja administrative action mule prashasnacha karvai mule kiwa constitutional amendment mule किंवा एखाद्या कायद्यामुळे जर मूलभूत अधिकारांचं उल्लंघन होत आहे असं वाटत असेल तर तो कायदा 
ती कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट किंवा ती प्रशासकीय कारवाई ही संविधानिक रित्या योग्य आहे किंवा नाही हे ठरवण्याचा अधिकार माननीय सर्वोच्च न्यायालयाला आर्टिकल बत्तीस खाली देण्यात आलेला आहे ओके अँड देअर फोर ड्यू टू आर्टिकल थर्टी टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऍक्ट ऍज अ सुप्रीम इंटरप्रिटर फायनल इंटरप्रिटर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्युशन अँड देअर फोर द कॉन्स्टिट्युशनल सुप्रेमॅसी ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज मच हायर दॅन दॅट ऑफ पार्लमेंट नाव द पार्लमेंट इज नॉट सुप्रीम बट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज सुप्रीम बिकॉज इट इज द फायनल इंटरप्रिटर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्युशन अँड देअर फोर द सुप्रेमेसी ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्युशन इज शिफ्टेड टू द सुप्रेमेसी ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट बिकॉज ऑफ आर्टिकल थर्टी टू इट इज अ फायनल रेग्युलेटिंग अथॉरिटी इन इंडिया विच इज अ नथिंग बट अ वॉच डॉग ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्युशन इट इज द कॉन्स्टिट्युशनल ड्युटी ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट दॅट दे मस्ट सी that no fundamental right can be violated or is to be violated due to any parliamentary law or due to any executive or administrative action the supreme court has to act as a watchdog over constitution okay now due to this article 32 due to the public interest litigation due to the judicial activism and the power of judicial review the supreme court has expanded the scope of article 21 article 21 which provides no person shall be deprived of his right to life and personal liberty except according to procedure established by the law the supreme court has expanded the scope of right to life and personal liberty due to article 32 due to public interest litigation now article 21 though it is about the right to life and personal liberty but the supreme court has said that the right to life and personal liberty includes right to food shelter clothing right to health right to clean drinking water right to free from handcuffing right to clean and pollution free environment right to minimum wages or living wage right to privacy right to livelihood right to travel abroad solitary right to free from solitary confinement right to maintain the human dignity right to have social security right to set up family right to education right to be motherhood right to sleep and many other things which are related to the human life the life does not mean the life of animal existence as it is said by the supreme court in francis coroli bolin that the right to life does not mean the li- li- live a life of animal existence but it is the life to live a life with human dignity dignified life must be there so that the person can fulfill his ambitions uh, through his right to life under article 21 now again i would like to take a overview that why this article 32 is very important why this fundamental rights are very important because as we have discussed earlier ub just eb remedium which means where there is right there must be a remedy the right which are recognized and protected by law the interest which is recognized and protected by law is considered as a right and these right is recognized under part 3 under part 3 of the constitution that is a fundamental right or article 12 to 35 recognizes the fundamental right and it also protects the fundamental right under article 32 and therefore this part 3 is both recognition as well as protection of fundamental right okay therefore the as we as i have said that the rights have been uh, derived from the royal authority of king and queen in anglo saxon uh, era also uh, during 452 uh, 1200 ad the there was a well established maxim in us uk as well as in european countries that the royal authority must have some discretionary or prerogative rights and these prerogative rights and discretionary rights are 
कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड इन द नेचर ऑफ रीट्स रीट्स आर नथिंग बट द ऑर्डर्स रीट म्हणजे काय ऑर्डर्स दे आर नथिंग बट द ऑर्डर्स देन इन आर्टिकल 32 एज वेल एज आर्टिकल 226 ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन 226 प्रोवाइड्स दैट द डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ रीट्स रीट्स इन द नेचर ऑफ एबीएस कॉर्पस मैंडेमस सर्जरी को वारंट एंड प्रोहिबिशन that all we'll see uh, one by one later on but here we are understanding the importance of article 32 why this is very important why the baba sai ambedkar has said that it is the heart and soul of the constitution that we must understand okay article 21 has said that the pro- no person shall be deprived of his right to life and personal liberty except according to procedure established by law then that procedure which is established by the parliament through the law that procedure must be fair just and reasonable as we have seen under article 21 the supreme court in maneka gandhi has made it clear that you can deprive a person from his right to life and personal liberty you can take away the right to life and personal liberty tumi jagnyacha ani vayakti swatantracha adhikar kadun shak kadun geu shaktat kayda dware matra to kayda kasa asayla hava just fair and reasonable kayda kasa asayla hava तर तो संयुक्तिक योग्य आणि सचक बुद्धीला अनुसरून असा असायला हवा तर आणि तरच तुम्ही एखाद्या व्यक्तीचे जीवन जगण्याचे किंवा वैयक्तिक स्वातंत्र्याचे अधिकार हिरावून घेऊ शकतात मग आर्टिकल नाईन्टीन प्लस टू टू सिक्स मध्ये दिलेले काही रेस्ट्रिक्शन बाकीचे जे काही प्रोसिजर प्रोवाइड केलेले आहे सीआरपीसी मध्ये सीपीसी मध्ये किंवा एव्हिडन्स ऍक्ट मध्ये त्या प्रोसिजर नुसार कायद्याने दिलेली जी काही प्रक्रिया आहे ती फॉलो करून तुम्ही त्या व्यक्तीचे जीवन जगण्याचे अधिकार मर्यादित करू शकता आणि मग तुम्ही शिक्षा देण्याचा अधिकार प्राप्त होतो बट यू हॅव टू फॉलो द फेअर जस्ट अँड रिझनेबल प्रोसिजर दॅट टू एस्टॅब्लिश बाय द लॉ अँड देअर फॉर आर्टिकल थर्टी टू इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट इट इज व्हेरी मच रिलेटेड टू आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन दिस आर्टिकल प्रोवाइड्स द फायनल इंटरप्रिटिंग अथॉरिटी इज द सुप्रीम कोर्ट द ज्युडिशियरी इट शॅल डिसाईड whether this procedure is a fair just reasonable or not fair just and reasonable or not if the court is of the opinion that the procedure is not fair the procedure is not just and by way of unjust procedure the fundamental rights are been deprived of or taken off then the supreme court shall decide such law such constitutional amendment or such administrative action is against the fundamental right and therefore in manika gandhi case supreme court has said the passport authority who has impounded the passport of manika gandhi is unreasonable action it denies the principles of national justice and therefore such unreasonable procedure of law is against is violative of article 21 okay and therefore by this article uh, 32 the court has all the or rights or the constitutional obligations to look into when there is a no law or when law is falling short to fill that patch to fill that gap the supreme court shall mold the law the supreme court shall consider the changing needs of the society and accordingly the supreme court has read many rights under article 21 because the constitution has identified the judiciary as a organic wing of democracy the judiciary shall sense shall understand the emotions the facts and circumstances surroundings of the society and therefore to maintain the human rights to maintain the human dignity the judiciary shall come forward and this is nothing but the very obligation on the supreme court to guarantee the fundamental rights of citizens okay now there are many case laws which have been discussed by the supreme court under article 32 like uh, bijay emnl which is known as national anthem case or ismail faruqi case uh, manika gandhi case keshwanand bharati adm jabalpur versus shukan shukla and many other cases can be cited here okay and therefore 